Turn to Mr. Chetan Mughal. Mr. Mughal, floor is yours. Today we're going to talk about mostly building information modeling. It's used currently, but big picture, we're talking about the challenges the technology is already facing in the developed countries. And we want to make sure we start on the right grounds. Recent months, we came with Mars mission. We achieved Mars first time, and we did it in record low cost. Planning for effective execution. I want to remember this. What we want to do today is understand how the technology evolved. Technology came to, had its own challenges. You know, we had, we had location access issues. Then something else came to the rescue. Construction, technology came to the rescue, right? So we had the Flemish bonds and we had the tongue and groove joints and they actually used the natural materials and put the technology out there for us. But we started running into the challenges. We wanted more space, urbanization. So new technology comes to the process. We got new materials. Steel, concrete comes to picture. But where we're going from here is we have challenges that we're trying to manage now. We have waste. We have energy inefficiencies. We have other uh, problems where the buildings are getting complicated. We can't even finish projects. Many projects are not be able to finish on time in budget. Huge problem for everybody, every country. So. Digital technology is here for the rescue. Digital technology or building information modeling, we want to step back and just give a big, quick summary of what building information technology is. It's building information technology, a 3D space. Imagine this room. It's a 3D space which is designed by multiple consultants, operated on multiple levels. Globally, nationally, they could be anywhere. They come into this space and they design. They run energy analysis, they run simulations, they know which tiles to use, they're picking the colors, everything have is happening in the digital world. So there is a tile, there's a geometry, and there's data that is connected to it. Fascinating. All the data that is connected to every single tile. You have colors, you have what, how many ports, which manufacturer, which part numbers, where to order from, who is the consultant. All this information gathered together analyzed to its perfection. And then it goes to the construction team. Construction team takes it and says, wait a minute, we're gonna visualize and plan how we're gonna build this. We're gonna plan how we build this. Measure twice, built once, they say. Visualize twice, built once, I say. Plan properly, right? Planning for effective execution. That's what we're talking about here. So we're planning and we're planning to make sure that it's executed in time, within budget, and safe. Technology, BIM technology is adapted in every single platform. Treatment plants, hospitals, airports, everywhere. And it's there to stay. All the countries, developed countries, they want to make sure the BIM is part of their policies. So 2016, USA, UK, mandatory. All the projects have to use BIM because they know the results. So it's a better managed building. The equipment are managed better because they're gonna tell you when to change a filter. They're gonna tell you who to call, what parts to order, what are the right parts, how to run diagnostics. It's all part of that simple model on a computer. So BIM is here to stay. We are a huge implementation of BIM, but we have its own challenges, right? So BIM's challenges are twofold. Skill, we want people who can build models with using BIM. And number two, open standards. Biggest problem that everyone that has used BIM in last decade is facing. Open standards, guidelines. The technology has got very complicated. It is not a big picture, it is very specifics. And if the specifics don't meet, they don't talk to each other. So I'm thinking, wait a minute, why can't we have a standard in between somewhere these technologies can communicate? Wow, that would be something really nice, right? So what happens is, now GSA, US governments, and other governments across UK, everyone is going back, and they're looking at this concept and say, wait a minute, we want to keep an open source technology. So now we're going back and creating best practices. We're creating technologies that could talk to each other. What is smart cities for India? And what we have to do is we have to go back and understand it's about planning. It's about guidelines and standards. Six bullet points is where I come up with my standards from my experience. And we have to establish an organization that takes the vision of smart cities 
and brings it down to the specifications. What are the guidelines, open standards, what technologies to use, what software to use, what, how it is adapted. These guidelines will be then filtered down through every single city, and the cities will be monitored. We want to monitor all the developments. We want to create case studies, documentation, that will allow us to teach our skill set. Right? Huge skill set. We can't teach them in isolation. We want them out there, transfer media. We want to teach them. So that's the missing part. We have to make sure we do that. We have to create a platform. This organization will, will be a transparent organization and will be a knowledge sharing platform within all the organizations in the nations. Learning from others, teaching them what we did, creating best practices. So with this, I want to summarize. I want to talk about a little bit of more examples, what I mean with this. So you have a project where the architect and, and the engineers are working in isolation. They're designing a project. After the designing is done, they sit, create a BIM model. They put the models in the place. And they're moving equipment and the, and the ventilation points around. There is more CFM there. No, we don't want it. We want it here. This is where the people will be talking. Let's move things around. This is what is the tool. This gives you that cross collaboration. Once the designing is done, the energy analysis are run. Once this is done, we execute. So this is how smart it is. Now let's talk about infrastructure, site utilities. Site utilities, hospitals, critical facilities, they have site utilities. And it's important that we document and map them. It's mapping. We have it. I'm pretty sure we have it here. It's just a matter of digitizing it and exposing it. So in closing, what I want you to understand is, we want to go back to our core values, planning for execution. Planning for executions. It's about building the cities on a fundamental ground and standards. And the standards are very important. Thank you.